oyster by Mark Kulansky focuses on the oyster native to the New York Harbor area, once a pristine estuary of shimmering marshes and clear waters. And this focus allows the author to create a sparkling narrative of social and economic history. The coastal paradise of the lower Hudson nurtured huge populations of the now decimated eastern oyster. It was an inexhaustible resource indigenous Americans drew on for thousands of years and contributed greatly to the mercantile wealth and renown of New Amsterdam. The plump, tasty, and cheap bivalve nourished the poor and rich alike every day and kept the water clean by filtering impurities out of the entire harbor. But as the population grew, the constant discharge of garbage and sewage began to take a toll on the harbor floor. And when people began to complain and complain even more, especially when cholera and typhoid broke out, the oystermen reacted by perfecting the art of transplanting and cultivating oyster seed in clean places like the Great South Bay. The advent of cultivation changed everything. Workers shucked and pickled as fast as they could, shipping barrels far and wide as the international reputation of the oysters soared. Markets boomed both domestically and abroad, and specialized eateries such as the city's famous oyster sellers sprang up to meet demand. By 1880, the area's oyster beds produced up to 7 million oysters a year. New York residents, rich and poor, slurped the creatures in the oyster cellars, stands, houses, cafes, and restaurants. They ate them pickled, stewed, baked, roasted, fired, and scalloped. They ate them in soups, patties, and puddings for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The bounty actually endured for centuries, but eventually the unbridled harvesting and increasing waterfront pollution spelled the end of the great oyster beds a natural resource that played an integral part in transforming New York from a relatively minor port into the social and financial center of the United States. In 1927, the city's last oyster beds closed and purveyors switched to cleaner sources. But the fouling of the waters only intensified, and it is this history, the trashing of New York, that is the real subject of the book. It is a cautionary tale that speaks to our times but it is unfortunate that people seldom pay attention unless it hits them in the wallet or the gut.